Mark Caboli, friend of the show, friend of uh, Boston Me on Twitter. I had so many. He he's in he's on a trend right now where he likes to comment on my tweets, and you know I love Mark. He's the dude. But uh, I get a lot of people in my DMs once he does that that are like, "Yo, you and Caboli beefing? Are you guys, uh, you guys got some issues right now?" And I always reply, "Yes." I'm always like, "Oh yeah, dude, that guy pisses yeah. me off. That mm-hmm. guy just boils me, man, right to my core." No, nothing but love for Mark. He is. Uh, Mark's like the guy where when we talk, and we'll dive into what this is actually about here in a second. But my, Mark's the guy where like, and I'm sure it's with everybody, but it's definitely with me a lot with you as well. There, there. It's never like a. There are never serious words that come out of his mouth ever. It's always just like it's always like a sarcastic joke that's like making fun of you, and I'm just like, and you just have to interpret it to be able to continue the conversation, which is, you know, I appreciate right. it. It's like Mark presents you with a riddle before you're uh, yes. that you have to solve before you're uh, <laughs> able to have a real conversation with him. That is exactly it. That is exactly it. I, I, uh, I, I got a lot of text over the weekend from a lot of people. Um, just about a lot of different things. And I was expecting a text from Kaboli in the moment to just be like, Hey, uh, you know, happy for you or, or something, <laughs> something crazy, like just something a little bit, a little bit biting that, uh, I, I thought would have, would have fit his, would have fit his mold very well. But I do love telling people that me and Kaboli are beefing on Twitter. It's always, always a good time. Either way, he has said via 93.7, the fan that, he doesn't know who is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers' next offensive coordinator. He expects them to begin talking to people when they get down to the senior bowl here in the next week or two. But he does know who they will not hire this season, and that is former Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, who has been brought up a number of times by a number of different people, ourselves included, as a guy that the Pittsburgh Steelers should consider probably could have hired as like an offensive consultant earlier in the year or even last season for the last two years this guy's name's been floated around the Pittsburgh Steelers as somebody to join the off- offensive staff Ex- excuse me according to Mark Caboli that is the one name so far that he can rule out that the Pittsburgh Steelers will not hire when you heard that what were your thoughts does it make some sense it it does make I mean so I think it's I don't know. It makes sense in one sense and doesn't in another. Um, yeah. I think I kind of like that they are not necessarily looking at someone who is real established, you know, and, yes. and maybe a little older. Um, and I think is kind of set in his ways in this league. I think they're looking for someone a little bit, maybe younger, a little bit more willing to think outside of the box. Um, and so I think in that sense, that's good. But I mean, also like, Byron Leftwich has his has some results on his resume, you know, like he's yes. he's been there and he's done that and he has coordinated offenses at a really high level. Um, so I think in that sense, it's a little I wouldn't call it disappointing necessarily, but just surprising that they are kind of shutting that door that they, you know, assuming Mark's report is correct. And I do. Um, I, I trust that um, that they are kind of shutting that door so quickly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like not even kind of exploring the possibility because. If I'm not mistaken, over the like in the middle of the season, he was expressing interest in uh, taking over a Steelers offensive coordinator while they yeah, still had like, Matt Canada. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Or like just joining the staff. He was just making fault. Hey, could I? Could I come? Can I get a job, please? Yeah, like, like, literally. Was, it was a no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I, I mean, of course, it was going to be like I don't know if they didn't hire you during the. Like the Steelers weren't sitting around thinking, "Oh, Byron Leftwich wants to come be an offensive <laughs> analyst." Like in the, like that. I, I guess that's the part that doesn't surprise me either. Is that, I mean, if they turned him down in the middle yeah. of the season for even a, a lower level job, why would they? Why would they say yes now? So I guess that's not very surprising in that sense. No, I agree. I, and I don't think he look. He does have results, but he also has poor results, and you know things kind of uh, fell fast and. I think the Steelers, I think to a degree, I like the fact that the Steelers are eliminating guys who have any connection to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just don't, I don't think that that fits what they should be looking for. I I have a lot of respect for Byron Leftwich. I think a lot of guys have a lot of respect for Byron Leftwich. There's been plenty of former players, Ben Roethlisberger included, who have named him as the guy that they would like to see be their next offensive coordinator. I just I think that you move I think you go as far away from this as possible. You're like hey, he played for the Pittsburgh. Sorry, pal. Nope. We're going. If you do not have any connection to us, 
you are at the top of the list for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That just removes all distractions. It removes any loyalty. It removes any anything at all, anything negative whatsoever, anything that could hold you here longer than or, or lower your level of accountability or whatever. I, I just think it should all be off the table. Byron is a guy that, yeah, I think I think things kind of like got weird, maybe when he started looking for a job in the middle of the season, because the Steelers probably did like, hey, sorry, pal, we're we're not even considering that move. I think things are going to get more complicated if and, and think about if it if it did happen, like if you hired Byron while Matt Canada was still here, the headlines would be explosive. It would be so bad. Things would get so confusing and and nobody would be talking about it i mean it was tough enough for players to just constantly hear hey is matt canada getting fired do you think that your offensive coordinator is good enough could you imagine hey do you think that byron leftwood should be the offensive coordinator because that would be all the questions and i just i think it was a good move by the steelers i think to not bring that guy in makes a lot of sense i also just don't think that he fits like i don't think he's at the level of some of these guys that the steelers should consider like a clint kubiak or I mean, Cam Hayward was talking out like or tossing out like Eric Bieniemy and and Bobby Slowick today, and I don't think either of those guys are on the table at all. But I just that's the level, like that is the expectation, and I don't think Byron Leftwich necessarily meets that expectation. Yeah, that's a good point too. I mean, I feel like if you if you pulled Steelers fans today and you said Byron Leftwich, like you yeah. get half of them that'd be like, oh, I remember that name. So yeah, that works. Um, but you'd get another half that would just be that would just feel kind of underwhelmed i think yes. by by that hire it wouldn't necessarily be bad so you can't really knock it i i would say but it would just be kind of underwhelming i think for a franchise that needs to be really ambitious and really be forward thinking and really kind of take a home run swing at this point which is just, it's just such a pivotal point in kind of this franchise not to like be dramatic but this franchise's history um is- and like this off season is going to determine a lot of the near and long-term future for this, this organization. So um, I don't think you can afford to think small in in this, uh, in this situation. And not that Eric BM, uh, not, not Eric BM, uh, Byron Leftwich. not that I think that he would be an awful offensive coordinator. I just think it would be underwhelming and, and a little, it'd be a safe hire. Right. And, And I don't think the Steelers need safe right now. No, no, they need to shoot for the stars and, and whoever it is hired, whoever is hired, like fans should be fans should have no idea who he is. And those who do should be like, wow, that's awesome. Like that is such a great hire. Anything that doesn't get that reaction, I think, is playing it too safe. And I don't I, I honestly I personally don't think the Steelers are trying to play it safe. Like, I don't think that there's any part of this organization or Mike Tomlin or Art Rooney or Omar Khan or anybody else who's sitting around going. Let's let's just make sure that this guy, you know, is can we can control and handle what he's going to bring to the table. I think they're looking at it and going, we need a splash. We need something crazy and we got to go get something crazy. I don't think Byron Leftwich is in the classification of crazy. And because of that, I just I don't think it's the right move. So Kaboli could be right. That's a good it's a good start to the OC search. We'll dive into it more. The The Senior Bowl is a, a week away, week and a half away, something like that. So there should be some names uh, that emerge from there, and the Steelers should begin their search as other candidates begin to remove themselves from the table. 